What's up guys and welcome to episode 3 of Bonnet Inku's Rising Sun painting series. I'm super excited for today's tutorial because today we're painting up one of my favorite Shintos from the core box, if not my absolute favorite, which is the Dragonfly Shinto. I decided to go a bit rogue on this guy as far as the color scheme goes, since the concept art by Adrian Smith was just a bit too bland and earth tony for my taste. So before we get started, I just want a quick second to go over the color scheme that I chose to use to help explain why the colors chosen work so well together and help this model look so appealing to the eye. Looking at the finished model, we can see that the main colors are blue, green, orange, and red. If we take a look at our color wheel, these four colors form what is called a rectangular or tetradic color scheme. There is of course some yellows and browns thrown in there, but those are more earth tony and can be generally ignored as far as the color scheme goes, since they can fit in with practically any color scheme chosen. However, let's say we decide to include that yellow in our color scheme. That would get us very close to what would be called a polychromatic or rainbow scheme, and all we'd have to do to complete this scheme is add in a little bit of purple and we'd be there. So yeah, there's a bit of simple color theory for you guys, and if you found this color theory stuff interesting or would like me to continue to include some future videos, let me know in the comments below. Alright, let's get painting. I start off by basically in the center of the outer feathers using some leather brown. I then used BC Brown to base coat sections both above and below that leather brown, and then did a little bit of wet blending to blend those two colors together and create a semi-smooth transition. Now this doesn't have to be perfect at all because later we're going to do some washes and dry brushes which will fully blend this together and make it look really neat. What I did here was I added a little bit of drying retarder to both the leather brown and the BC brown and grabbed a little bit of one of those colors, create a line on the model, then gave the brush a quick rinse and then grabbed the second color and applied that on a line right next to the first one and then took my brush and ran it back and forth between the two colors until the desired blend was achieved. For those of you who'd like to learn a little bit more about wet blending and other blending techniques, I'm working on creating the first episode of my beginner's guide to painting series which will cover precisely that. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure that you're subscribed and that you've got the little bell selected so you get notified when that gets posted. After blending those colors together, I did the same thing with a 1 to 1 mix of BC Brown and Ochre Brown, applying this to the upper and lower areas of the feathers, and once again, blending them together with that BC Brown layer, just like we did with the Leather Brown and BC Brown. After that, I applied some ochre brown to the very tops and the very tips of the feathers and blend those together with a little bit of two brush blending, or in my case, one brush blending, which is essentially just applying the paint to the model, rinsing out the brush and then removing most of the water from the brush so that it just remains damp, and then taking that damp brush and pulling the paint into the layer that you're trying to blend it into. Once again, we'll be covering more on this topic in episode one of Bonnet Inku's Beginner's Guide to Painting series. After getting all that fur base coated, I then applied a 1 to 1 mix of Agrix Earthshade and Wash Base to all the outer feathers. Then 
Then after giving that wash plenty of time to dry, I did a couple layers of dry brushing to pick out all the feathers and pop out those details. Starting first with some Beastie Brown, followed by a one-to-one -one mix of Beastie Brown and Ochre Brown, then straight Ochre Brown, and finally, a one-to-one -one mix of Ochre Brown and Moon Yellow. With all those outer feathers done, I then applied some leather brown to those ropes and feather assembly pieces around his arms. I then used BC Brown to pick out all the twists and details of the ropes, and then a one-to-one -one mix of BC Brown and Bone White to pick out the ropes on the tops and bottoms of the feather rig. After that, I started painting the inner feathers by first applying some blue to the inner and uppermost feathers. I then applied a one to one mix of blue, green, and blue, and just like with the colors on the outside, wet blended it together with the previous color. Then for the third color, I used blue-green.
Then for the final color, I use a 1 to 1 mix of blue green and necrotite green. With all those base coats complete, it was time to create some contrast by applying some washes. For this, I chose to use Nono, Dragon Off Nightshade, and Biotan Green, blending them together to create cool transitions. First I applied the Nolan Oil to the blue in the upper sections, then blend that together with some Dragon Off Nightshade in the middle areas, followed by some Biotan Green in the lower areas that were covered in that Necrotide Green mix. After those shades had fully dried, I applied a couple layers of dry brushing to pop out those details and create some fun transitions. For the first dry brush, I used blue-green. For the second dry brush, I used a one-to-one -one mix of blue-green and dead-white. It was at this point that my wife thought, this looks kind of interesting. So I gave her the chance to take a whack at it. Then for the third dry brush, I used a one tone mix of Necrotite Green and Moon Yellow, which started to create a fun transition between the blue and the green. I then finished off the feathers with the final dry brush of Moon Yellow. After finishing off those feathers, it was time to move on to the shirt by first base coating it with some blue-green, followed by a wash of Dragonhoff Nightshade. I then used blue-green to bring back the mint tone, and then a one-to-one -one mix of blue-green and dead-white to apply some fine highlights.
After that, I put ochre brown to the pants and bone white to the leg wraps. I then applied a wash of Surf from Sepia and Agrax Earthshade to both the pants and the leg wraps. Once that wash is fully dried, I reestablish the mid-tone on the pants using Ochre Brown. I then applied some highlights to the pants with a one-to-one -one mix of ochre brown and moon yellow, followed by some moon yellow. After that, I used bone white to pick out all the details on the leg wraps. I then used flat red to base coat the headdress, ropes, belt, and the sword handles. After that, I washed down all that red with some Caribou Crimson.
I then applied Nolan Oil to the feathers closest to the headdress to darken them down and create some more extreme contrast. After giving those shades plenty of time to dry, I then used some bloody red and a fine detail brush to accentuate the ends of the feathers and pick out those details. After that, I use orange fire to highlight the headdress and base coat the waist wrap. I then applied two layers of Reikland Flesh Shade to the waist strap, using the airbrush in the between to help speed up the drying time. I then applied some highlights to the waist wrap by first applying some Orange Fire, followed by a one-to-one -one mix of Orange Fire and Moon Yellow. After that, I came back and finished up the headdress by base coating the remaining parts with a 2 to 1 mix of blue green and black, followed by a wash of known oil. I then added a bit of dead white to the blue green and black mix and applied some fine highlights. After that, I used some dead white to outline the eyes. When doing this, I would definitely recommend adding a bit of drying retard to the mix to help it not dry so fast on the tip of the brush. I then popped out the eyes by applying some Necotite Green. Then to finish off the eyes, I apply a small black dot to the very centers to form the pupils. This time I actually used black paint and a fine detail brush to do this, but usually I stick to using a fine tipped micron pen instead since it makes it really easy to create nice round pupils. After that, I base coated all the skin using Elf Skin Tone, followed by a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade.
After that shade had fully dried, I applied some highlights, first with Sunny Skin Tone, blending it in on some of the areas to create some smooth transitions, followed by some brighter highlights of basic skin tone. With the skin now complete, I moved on to finishing up the swords by base coating all the gold areas using brass, followed by a wash of smoky ink, and finally some fine highlights using solid gold. Then to paint the blades, I base coated them with some Model Air Black Metal and then created some true metallic metal effects by wet blending on some Model Air Steel in alternating areas of the blades. I also applied these same colors to the emblems on his necklace. After that, I painted the base black, and then to help identify him as being a Shinto from the Dragonfly Clan, I painted the trim using a 1 to 1 mix of blue green and dead white. Then as a final step, I applied some gloss varnish to protect all that hard work, then after giving that varnish plenty of time to cure, I applied some matte varnish to tone it back down. And there you have it guys, the Dragonfly Shinto is now complete. For those who are wondering, this guy took about 10 hours to paint, though I do want to mention that I'm a rather slow, methodical painter, and I'm sure a lot of you will be able to paint him much faster than I did. You can probably plan to take about half the time I spent to paint the model, plus or minus a couple hours, and that'll probably be how long it takes you to paint it. 
Also, if you're ever wondering how long a particular model took to paint, you can usually find that in the video description right before the paint list. Once again, thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful in painting your own Dragonfly Shinto. Be sure to head over and check out our Patreon, Facebook, and Instagram pages for extra bun and ink of goodness, especially the Patreon page where you can get early access to all tutorials, check out work in progress photos, help vote for miniatures that feature each month, and interact with other awesome miniature painters like yourself, both on Patreon and our Patreon exclusive Discord server. So if any of that sounds like something you'd enjoy, come on over and join the fun. As always, I appreciate you all for being here and checking out the content, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Dragonfly Shinto complete! Wonder Room. Oh!